Welcome back. We're still working with probability of compound events. In the last lesson, we learned how to create the visual representations. Now we're just going to find it using mathematics and it should go by a lot faster. So as I'm working, make sure you watch how I express probability of each event in fractional form, find the probability of the compound events, and then I multiply them together. Watch how I actually use multiplication here for each probability and how I express the fractions in simplest terms and convert to decimals and percentages. Let's look at the probability of two events. In this case, we have a coin and a die. We know that anytime we have a coin, two things can happen. I'm going to put two outcomes. And when we have a die, we have six outcomes. When we were looking at this on our matrix, if you had a two by six rectangle or a ring, how many outcomes could you have inside? Well, we would just have the product of both. We would have 12 different outcomes. So here's our points, here's a die, you have heads or tails, you have one, two, three, four, five, six on the die. And you can see all 12 things can happen in there. Instead of drawing this all the time, we want to be able to mathematically find the probability of more than one outcome. And watch how we can do this using what we know about arrays and the number of outcomes. We know that the probability is the product of all the outcomes, the probability of each outcome. So we're going to look for the probability of each outcome and multiply. So here we go. I want the probability of getting heads on the coin and I'm going to multiply that by the probability of getting a five on a die. Okay. So getting heads on the coin is one half and getting five on a die is one out of six. So the probability of both of those things happening is one twelfth. One divided by 12 is 0.083 or 0 0.08 or just an 8% chance. Very slim chance there. And that makes sense too because when we're looking at our table, we want heads and the five. So this is the only place where that happens on our chart. Where I get heads and five. All the rest doesn't give us the outcome we want because we want both of those things to happen in this case. So hit pause and jot this down. And again, the major takeaway is we're going to multiply and find the product of probability of each event. I'm even going to write it over here. We want the product of the probability. of each event. Let's look at this problem. When a biased coin is tossed, the probability of getting heads is two thirds. If the coin is tossed three times, what is the probability of not getting heads three times in a row? So we want to really get the probability of getting tails three times. Okay, it's a biased coin, meaning it's not a fair coin, it's a trick coin. So it's not going to be one half. As a matter of fact, the probability of getting heads is two thirds. So the probability of getting tails is one third. So I want one third times one third times one third. That's the product of all three events, which is one out of 27. Very little chance. Let's turn that into a decimal and that is equal to 0 0.037. Let's round it to 0 0.04 or 4%. Very unlikely. But again, our biggest takeaway is over here. If we want to find the probability of multiple events happening, it is much easier to find the product of all three individual events than to draw a table or to draw a tree much, much easier to just actually do the math and multiply all three and find the probability. All right, that's it for today, Math Marbles. Get to some practice. Remember that some of these 
are going to require you to multiply carefully. So please make sure you're not making silly errors and use your calculators to help you confirm and turn your probability into a decimal or a percent. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye.